And during the invasion of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, the walls are destroyed and in 587 BC, the temple is overthrown and King Nebuchadnezzar takes the people into exile. Now he's a name to remember for next week. And you can read about this in the book of Jeremiah, who deta details the exile of God's people in Babylon. But we will talk about that next week. So what is interesting about this time in Israel's history is that even though God's people have turned away from God again and again and broken their covenant agreement, we see a strand of hope through the books of the Minor Prophets. As we have seen, God is a God of love. He is just, he is good, he is holy, and so he can't let their actions go without consequences. Which is right, because what would be the point in being in relationship with an all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-holy creator of the universe if he didn't follow through on his word and if he, if he didn't stand against injustice and all that hurts his people? And we see in the book of Hosea that God is heartbroken and moved by another two characteristics of him. He's moved by his mercy and his compassion. And he will forgive his people. So although God allows his people to be conquered, that is not his final word. There is still hope. And we see the prophets begin to talk about a future hope because God knows that his people will repent and they will come back to him, but it won't last. And so he tells them that he will make a way to heal their waywardness and be able to love all nations freely. And in Joel, which is a short collection of poems, um, and Joel kind of assumes that you've read all of the other prophets as he draws influence from them. He depicts a future where God will confront evil and justice will be served. God's creation will be healed and one day the Spirit of God will not only dwell within the temple but within all the people that humble themselves across the nations and acknowledge God as their God. And we know that happens and Pentecost is coming up. And at the end of the book of Amos, another prophet, there is a glimmer of hope that out of the ruins of the nation of Israel, he will restore the house of David. That is, God will restore the house of David and build a new kingdom, which will include all nations and has promised a messianic king will one day sit on the throne. And we also see in the book of Obadiah, another prophet, prophet who expands on these promises with a picture of a new Jerusalem where God will restore his kingdom over Jerusalem with a faithful remnant and there expand to include all nations. Do you know what we're talking about? Do you see what the prophets are beginning to talk about here? We've got one more part before we get to Jesus. And so this is the story of the divided kingdom. But now the people are in exile under Assyria in the north and Babylon in the south. And we're gonna talk about that next week. It's creative challenge time now. And before we tell you the challenge for this week, a massive shout out to Katie, who has been painting up a storm and is the winner of last week's challenge. I have some of her evidence on my doorstep and I've seen many other people post on Facebook when they've discovered her rocks in their gardens this week. So thank you, Katie, for spreading hope all over Egham. A prize will be winging its way to your house this week. So your creative challenge for this week is to create a one minute video explaining about your hope in Jesus 
and how others can experience this hope as well. Now you could use pictures, you could film yourself talking, add sounds, music. You really have free reign to think outside the box and be as creative as possible. The only requirement is, is that it must be no more than one minute. And to make this even more exciting, the winning video will be posted to our social media pages. And as always, there's a prize. So think creatively, get your movie director hats on uh, and send your videos in by 10 a.m. on Thursday, the 21st of May, and we'll announce the winner next week. As always, uh, we want to finish our session by praying. And today we've talked about the nation of Israel needing to repent and to turn back. And something we do as a church uh, is a practice called confession. Now, I know that can sound really scary, uh, but actually it's such a gift and it's such a freeing uh, practice to do. And it's basically just chatting to God and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry when I did this, I'm sorry when I uh, messed up here, uh, please uh, forgive me and God is so gracious, he's so merciful, and thanks to what Jesus has done on the cross, we uh, can come freely to him and ask him to help us uh, with the things we find hard in our lives. So what we want to do today is we're just going to take a bit of time, I'm going to begin praying, but then we want you to take time for yourselves to think in your own heart, if there's anything you want to chat through with God, um, and if there's any situation that you might need to resolve and it comes full of love it comes full of grace and mercy and um, god just wants to extend his hand of love to you so let's pray Yeah, Heavenly Father, I just pray that for all of us now that are taking time to sit with you, would you just pour out your Holy Spirit? Thank you that you've come to live with inside each of us and that you transform us from the inside out. I just pray that your Spirit would just bring to mind any of those things that we need to put at the foot of the cross and offer to you and say I just Lord I'm sorry and I ask your forgiveness thank you that you're healing our wayward hearts come Holy Spirit Yeah, Father, we long to be the people that you've created us to be. 
in relationship with you. Thank you that you are so kind and you're so gentle with our brokenness. Yeah, I pray that you would be with all of us at this time that is so different and so difficult in many ways. Yeah, would you be growing in us? Goodness and kindness and peace. And as we seek to be in your presence, Father, would the fruits of your spirit be produced? Father, thank you for your word and thank you for the hope that it brings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that's it from me this week. Don't forget to send us in any good news you might have, your household humour. Remember, you could win some money with that. And your creative challenge by 10 a.m. on Thursday. And all that's left to be said is, I've been Grace, and this has been Grace and Clem in the Bungalow. Hi, news channel report. Oh gosh, that is so bad. Let's start that again.